All right, fourth question. Each keyword is like a different blank for your business, meaning the customer demand can vary significantly. Now, which one of these will vary the customer demand significantly? Is it tagline, salesperson, or storefront? So the thing you have to realize about customer demand is that it's immovable. Like as an entrepreneur, you can't change the demand. That would be a stupid thing to try to do. Um, and so two of these things, um, you know, don't really change the customer demand. One of these things uh, does change the customer demand. Um, so let's eliminate salesperson off the bat because we know that a salesperson is just going to, um, you know, convert the demand that maybe a higher rate. They're not necessarily going to change the demand. Um, and of course, the same thing for a, a tagline. A storefront actually, depending on where you put your store's location could tap into a very different level of demand. Same thing for a keyword. Depending on the keywords that you choose, you're gonna be targeting different customers walking by your store, and maybe that they're gonna be in a better mood to buy. Um, if you have a, um, you know, a shoe store uh, inside a shopping mall with other shoe stores, there's probably gonna be some existing demand there that you can tap into. This is why sometimes competitive keywords can be a good thing because they're already working. Whereas if you put a, um, you know, a shoe store, uh, you know, in the middle of the desert, well, there's going to be no demand there. So some keywords uh, may, may seem relevant based off of the wording, but actually you're not going to get from performance from that. So you have to realize that every keyword is almost like its own little store in a different town. And so the results you're going to get from those uh, vary quite significantly. Right. So the correct answer is storefront. Number five, how is customer acquisition cost calculated? Is it Google ad spend divided by button clicks, Google ad spend divided by email signups, or cost per click divided by email signups? So what is customer acquisition cost here? So customer acquisition cost is the cost of acquiring a single customer. All so, right, so how do we uh, measure that? So um, if you look at the different options, um, we have a couple different terms here. We have button clicks and email signups, and we have Google ad spend and cost per click. So button clicks is someone clicks on the, the buy now button but doesn't sign up. Email sign up is someone clicks on the button, click, and then signs up. Google ad spend is we, how much we spent for our ad. Cost per click is um, how much we spent on a single click. So cost per click could be a number between a dollar to a few dollars. Whereas Google Ads spend is going to be the total budget, you know, probably fifty dollars to one hundred fifty dollars. So we almost know right away that if we're trying to divide a few dollars by the total number of email signups, that's not going to be the right answer. Whereas um, we want to take the total budget and we want to divide it by the number of customers we've acquired, because it's the total amount, the total amount we've spent divided by the number of customers we've acquired gives us the cost per customer that we've, you know, the cost per customer. And so the, the only right answer here is email signups because button clicks aren't really uh, an acquisition. Right, you want their email addresses. Six, what is currency? Something a customer is willing to give up that validates they will go out of their way to use your product or $100 from a corporate CEO or an hour of a teenager's time or all of the above. Okay. So currency is a really important lean startup concept. And if you've been to the lean startup machine workshop, then you would definitely have had this idea sort of repeated to you over and over again. And um, all of these seem like kind of similar answers. So um, when I'm looking at this, I'm kind of debating between the first one, which is like a textbook definition and all of these. But if we look closer at the middle two ones, $100 from a corporate CEO, or an hour of a teenager's time, what do we realize about those two things? Do they kind of fit the, the same as the first sentence? No, they don't really fit. Um, Why not? You know, I would say $100 from a corporate CEO, you know, they're, they're really wealthy. They can easily just give you $100 just to get you to bug off. <laughs> yeah. um, an hour of a teenager's time, they have a lot of time, so they're happy to give you an hour of their time. So it's really what that customer, uh, per 
considers valuable to them. Right. So it would be this first one, something a customer is giving up that validates they will go out of their way to use your product. Right, so the CEO isn't giving up anything if they're giving $100, just like a teenager isn't giving anything up if they're giving an hour. They have plenty of those hours and, and $100 left. Right. All right, number seven. What is a leading question? Was I just asking a leading question here? Okay, is it a yes or no question? A question that starts with the word, word would or do? A question that pushes someone towards answering in a specific way? Or all of these? Well, Grace, you are the customer interviews expert, so why don't you tell us uh, which one of these is a, is a leading question? Or how do we, how do we look at this, this question? Yeah, so a leading question is a question that pushes someone towards answering in a specific way. But let's go into details as to what kind of questions uh, push, push someone towards yeah. answering in a specific so, way. So what's, what's not a leading question, actually? What's not a leading question? If you were to ask how or why someone does something, uh, if you want to ask a leading question, which you shouldn't, a leading question would be yes or no questions because you get um, yes or no uh, as an answer and that's kind of just a dead end that doesn't lead you to more insight. Or if you were to ask would questions or do questions, um, those are all future scenario questions that are very unreliable. So answer is all of the above. Right, so if you are building a startup and you're interviewing your customers, you do not want to ask leading questions. That's like the number one rule. And so any of these options are things that you do not want to do. And I can promise you we've all done them before. Yeah, I mean, a lot of salespeople like to, to ask leading questions because they're just so excited to sell their product. But uh, We're not selling when we do customer interviews. Exactly. We're trying to understand. Exactly. All right, number eight. What is a good CTR on an ad for a, a keyword? So CTR here is click-through rate. What is a good click-through rate? There is no standard click-through rate for keywords. Above 1% is considered a good click-through rate, or above 10% is considered a good click-through rate. Yeah, so there is a standard for this. Um, and uh, this, so CTR is click-through rate. And um, if, we, if we're using a certain keyword, remember different keywords are like different store locations, or different storefronts, um, they're gonna have different conversion rates. And so what is a good conversion rate that knows that this keyword is being effective? Well, uh, there is a standard, and uh, it's not above 10%. 10% is like, I've, you know, if you have a 10% above a 10% click-through rate, it must be a really targeted, or you just hit the jackpot, because the, by Google standards, uh, a good click-through rate is between one to 3%. Now, uh, with Cook MVP, I'm sure the vast majority of your keywords are gonna be probably closer to 0% than 1% because if you have a product nobody wants, then they're not gonna click on your ad, right? So to some extent, if you can't find any good keywords, then you have a bad business idea. 